Well, hello again, everyone, uh, and welcome to the final video in our math series, uh, Logic and Advanced Algebra. Okay, so we're going to start real quick with logic problems, which are, frankly, the most difficult problem type to teach, because they mostly just require an understanding of what's being asked of you exactly. Again, sort of every problem in the SAT is a logic question to an extent, right? Remember how I've said probably a hundred times at this point that there's little to not no very difficult computi comp computation excuse me, on the SAT, right? Um, but logic problems, or problems that are called logic problems, are kind of the epitome of that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a practice problem to see what I mean. So, as you can see at the bottom of your page, our question reads, at a sporting event, team flags of three different colors are handed out in the following order. Blue, blue, green, blue, red, red. Assuming this pattern continues, how many red flags will have been given out when a total of 100 flags have been distributed? Well, let's go ahead and write down our little, uh, our little order there, right? So it's blue... Blue, green, blue, red, red. Okay, so let's think about this for just a second. The question asks us, how many red flags will have been given out when a total of 100 flags have been distributed? Well, we know that we have in our pattern here a, no, a total of six flags, right? And we're assuming that we this order restarts every six flags, right? So the easiest way to attack this problem is actually going to be to uh, find the closest factor of 6 to 100 that is less than 100, right? Um, and then basically we're going to multiply. So like, so for, for every 6 flags, right, we're going to have 3 blues, right, okay, um, 2 reds, and 1 green, right? So let's say there were 96 flags given out, right? Um, there would have been in that, in that period. Okay, so there's uh, how many times would this pattern have repeated? Well, 96 divided by 6 is going to equal for us 16, right? So our pattern is going to have repeated 16 times. So after 96 flags have been handed out, there's going to have been 18 blue flags, or excuse me, um, rather, excuse me, not 18 flags, of course, but uh, 48 flags, right? 48 blue flags, right? Okay, as well as, let's see, there would have been 32 red flags given out in, after uh, 96 flags have been given out, and there would have been uh, 16, of course, uh, green flags given out. Now, uh, this is after 16 uh, repetitions of the pattern, after 96 flags have been given out, right? Um, so now that we've gone through 96 flags, question, of course, asks about 100 flags. So what we need to consider then is the number of, uh, or excuse me, the next four flags will be given out. Well, assuming that our pattern repeats the same way, the next four flags would go blue, blue, green, blue, right? Okay, so there would be no more additional red flags given out. So our final answer would indeed be that 32. Say it asks us how many green flags, though, for instance, right? We do exactly the same thing, we just need to count the next four, right? Blue, blue, green, blue. So there'd be one more green flag given out, there'd be 17. Say it was uh, blue flags we were asked about, it would go blue, blue, green, blue, right? So there'd be three more blue flags, so it'd be 51 total blue flags. But of course, the question asks us about red flags. So after 100 flags have been given out, there would have been 32 red flags distributed. Okay, so now that we understand the basic principles, um, let's look at one more practice uh, logic problem, right? So a class of 22 students is divided into groups. If each group contains either two or three students, what is the least possible number of groups? Well, we have 22 students, right, and every group contains two or three students. Now, uh, of course, the quickest way to divide these up would be to, in, to uh, suggest that every group includes the maximum number of students, which in this case is three, right? But say we tried to divide 22 by three, we would get seven with a remainder of one, right? And we can't have that final student in a group by himself. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to say, well, maybe there's six groups of three, right? Okay. So uh, let's say we have six groups of three, right? So that covers 18 of our students, leaving four students left, right? So we need uh, t then two groups of two to, con to, uh, to fully encompass all of those students, right? So that means we've covered all 22 students, right? And in doing so, we have uh, filled up eight total groups, right? That would be the minimum number. Of course, we were asked for the maximum number, right? It would then be, we would just divide by the smallest number of possible people in the group, and it would just be 22 divided by 2, right? And the, mo the, the maximum number of groups in this case would then be 11, right? But again, not what we're being asked for. Our final answer is eight groups, right? 
Okay, so now that we've got the hang of these uh, logic problems, let's take a look at some more advanced algebra kind of problems, right? Um, now, advanced algebra basically just means uh, not that the questions are any more difficult per se, right? But maybe there are question types that you haven't seen before, right? These are things that maybe you wouldn't exactly be taught in school. Again, they're going to only require the same basic concepts to compute, but they may be a little less intuitive, right? So let's take a look at this practice problem. Uh, you see it there at the bottom of your screen. How many four-digit integers have seven as their hundreds digit and three, six, or eight as their tens digit? Now, uh, the good news here is that counting problems such as this one um, do follow a basic principle. And that's basically that each number of possible independent events can be multi together, multiplied together to find the total number of intersections of those uh, possible events, right? So let me explain what I mean, right? So let's see. So the question asks us how many four-digit integers. So let's go ahead and draw four blanks here, right? Okay, one, two, three, four, right? So how many four-digit integers have seven as their hundreds digit? So we have this locked in here, right, as a seven, and three, six, or eight as their tens digit. So this has to be three, or six, or eight, right? So for this digit, we only have one possibility, right? Whereas for this tens digit here, we have three possibilities. Then how many possibilities do we have for our ones digit? Well, we'd have 10, right? It could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Our thousandth digit is a little bit of a different thing, right? You'd think it would be 10 because our ones digit has 10 possibilities, but actually our thousandth digit is only going to have 9 possibilities, right? Because think about it, if this number were a 0, we would then only have a 3-digit integer, right? Not a 4-digit integer. So now, basically, to find the total number of possible combinations here, all you need to do is multiply together all of your numbers, right? So we're going to have uh, 9 times 1 times 3 times 10, right? So let's move backwards. 10 times 3 is 30. 30 times 1 is 30. And 30 times 9 is, of course, 270. There are 270 possible four-digit numbers uh, from which, or excuse me, that meet these criteria of having a 7 in the hundreds digit and having a 3, a 6, or an 8 in the uh, tens digit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and conclude this video and this video series with uh, perhaps the most commonly missed question type on the entire SAT. Uh, and that is what uh, you might call like an operation definition question. Um, let's look at the question to see what I mean. So let the operation uh, upside down uh, solid triangle be defined by the equation x triangle y equals xy minus x minus y. Okay, so basically all that means, right, is that we're going to be given this little symbol here, right, with numbers on either side of it, right, okay? So it says x triangle y, right, equals then uh, xy minus x minus y, right? So let's just say we had 1 and 2, right, okay? So if it was for numbers were 1 and 2 on either side, all that means is we take the numbers that are put in place of those x's or y's, right, or any other variable that it may be, right? And we plug them into the equation for that variable, right? So in this case, we just take our 1, plug it in for the x, take our 2, plug it in for the y, right? Minus then 1 minus 2, yeah? So um, let's take a look. So it's going to then, we're going to reduce to, let's see, 2 minus, um, let's see, negative 1. And of course, minus negative 1 is the same thing as adding a positive 1, right? So our final answer in this case would be 3. Does that make sense? Now, of course, our question is a little more uh, complex, right? Our question asks us, if 2 triangle y equals 7, what is the value of y? Well, basically, in this case, we're given a value to plug in for this, right? But then only one of the values for our variables, right? So we know then if x triangle y equals xy minus x minus y, that uh, 2 triangle y, right, which is going to equal 7, right? We're given basically a final answer. Um, is also going to equal, uh, well, if we plug in our 2s for our x's, right, we'll then be able to solve for our y's, right? So if we have then 2y minus 2 minus y, right? Um, so now all we basically have to do is uh, solve this single variable equation, right? Um, so first thing we're going to need to do is distribute because we can't do anything in here with uh, a number and a variable, right? So the first thing we're going to do is make this plus a negative 1, right? Because there's always an implied 1 outside of any parentheses, right? which you would then could distribute if you wanted to. But since it was minus here, we're going to make that plus a negative one, right? Which we're going to distribute to both of these, right? So then we know that 7 equals 
2y, then minus 2, and then our negatives cancel here, so plus y, right? So if we add 2 to both sides, right, add 2, add 2, right, we're going to then be left with, I'm going to move up my work up here real quick, um, we're going to be left with 3y equals 9, divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by 3, and very simply our final answer is when x equals 2 in this scenario, and the operation 2 triangle y equals 7, y is going to equal 3. Okay, well, this, again, concludes um, the, you know, math portion of our, of our lessons. Um, I hope you learned a lot, um, and I hope you, uh, you know, continue to study and do well in the SAT. Um, thank you again for watching, and I hope you also watch our reading and writing series. Thank you.